Welcome to session eight of the 360 degree leader. Today I have with me our good friend, Emma. We also have a surprise guest, Patam. Patam is an employee with Hudson and he really enjoys participating in all of our Women of Hudson conversations. So we brought him in today so that we can get his fresh 20 year old mm -hmm. take yep. on mm -hmm. the, you know, the conversations that we're having. So welcome, Patam. Thank you very much. Thanks for joining again, Emma. Thanks for having me again, Faith. And really excited for our conversation today, bringing some fresh voices. Today, we're going to talk about how we can add value and continue to build on those relationships with our peers, our teammates, our coworkers. Um, just a quick reminder, the 360 degree leader is all about building influence. How do we build influence up? down and across. Today we're talking about across. Last month we talked about how do we um, build and strengthen those relationships outside of work and today we're going to talk about some specific things and some mindsets that we should mm -hmm. have um, as when we talk about building relationships and adding value inside of the office. Uh, and so the first thing we're going to talk about is letting the best idea win. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? It's an idea is your brainchild. Yes. It's so hard. Like you've put a lot of time and energy and emotions into this idea. It's really hard if somebody else comes in and is like, but what about this if we did this, right? Right. <laughs> Are you willing to listen to that? Yeah. And I think you have to be as a leader. And that's what we're all trying to be here, right, is, is leaders. Um, you have to be open and willing to listen to everybody's idea and accept that yours might not be the best one. It doesn't mean that it's a bad one, but it might not be the best. I mean, yours might not be the best. <laughs> Mine's always the best. <laughs> uh, I, uh, the, you know, I read this piece in the book that I really, really liked, and it said, in order to figure out the best idea, you have to come up with good ideas first. Mm. Um, mm -hmm. A good leader has the open-minded willingness to listen to all ideas. Almost all really new ideas have a certain aspect of foolishness when they are mm -hmm. first produced. Um, and so are you willing to listen to all ideas and not discount an idea just because it's never been done before or like because to you it seems like it might be stupid? It might be I, silly. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I have a friend who owns a design shop and she's super successful and makes tons of money, but she'll come to me with like a design idea and I'll look at her like, you know, that like that's stupid that's never gonna that's <laughs> never gonna look good but then her vision comes to pass and it's the most beautiful uh -huh. thing um but it I mean, it is true right like when can you imagine when somebody came and was like oh let's do this thing called the light bulb it's gonna replace right? the flash or like the <laughs> internet that came from like what would be seemingly a very silly idea at the time. Like, you want to do what? Be able to talk to people across the globe, but like through this computer? That's insane. Oh, you can have a computer that you can hold in one little right? hand and take it with you everywhere? Who remembers? <laughs> Patam doesn't because Patam's 20, but Patam wouldn't have um, went through sitting in their math class when the teacher looked at you and said, you better learn how to do long division because you're not always going to have a calculator <laughs> right? in front of you. They didn't know we'd have it in our hands yeah. available. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But started as a foolish idea. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. But, but it's, it's bringing those ideas to the table. It's being open and willing to listen to everybody else's that really is going to create that that great idea, right? So if you have a good idea and Tom brings a good idea and I bring a good idea and we collaborate together, we could create a great idea. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I think you're absolutely right about that. Um, we talked before about how good is the enemy of great. Mm -hmm. Like we're so stuck on like, this is good. This is good enough that we're not open to kind of like making it better. Yeah. And so having that perspective of I'm not tied down to this so hard that I'm not going to listen to yeah, anybody else to and like yep. see if we can collaboratively come up with something better. Um, yeah. You know. So 
so the next the next oh, okay. topic on the list is um, put completing others over competing with others. So obviously there's healthy competition in a workplace, right? Everybody's striving to do better and be better creates an atmosphere where everybody gets built up then, right? Mm -hmm. Instead of diminished. I was playing a bunko game the other day. Never played bunko. Heard good things though. (laughs) So, oh my gosh, it's so fun. I, like, we should literally have a Women of Hudson bunko league. But um, <laughs> it's, a, it's a game of total chance. There's nothing that you, you're rolling dice. And unless you have trick die, uh-huh. then I don't think that there's anything that you can do to win the game. I don't right. Know. But somebody else might say I'm wrong. But anyway, rolling the dice, rolling the dice, and my partner. And so you don't have the same partner. Like, you switch partners every time, like, mm-hmm. a game is up. My partner looks at me, and she's like... Because I'm just rolling duds over and over. Mm-hmm. She's like, maybe I shouldn't. We shouldn't have been partners. <laughs> I picked the wrong partner <laughs> in this game of chance because her competitive spirit was so, so high. Strong. Yeah, she needed yes. to win this bunko game. But but the reality is that we can sometimes get like that at the office. Mm-hmm. Um, we can we can do things like have this idea that is uh, that is like. You know, I have to win. My idea has to win instead of letting the best idea win. Or we can, you know, always instead of being congratulatory for to Batam for like getting a new job or getting a raise or a promotion, Mm -hmm. instead we're sitting back here thinking about how can I take him down. Yes. Oh my gosh, that's crazy. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. That's all. That I really like that point. That healthy competition can be a motivative factor Mm -hmm. in our group that we see competition but it has to be maintained by or so, like a certain margin where it doesn't become a toxic work environment right yeah. absolutely yeah, and there, there's there's definitely something about healthy competition versus that you know mm-hmm. where you we are you are taking people down and it becomes mm-hmm. to- toxic and then it turns into you're competing against each other instead of together trying to win mm-hmm. so. yeah we talked about this a couple uh, months ago when we when we uh, talked about the leadership loop, and that mm-hmm. is mm-hmm. the fact that you know winning as an individual is not uh, success, yep. right? Winning as, as a, a team, team is, is what is what success is. Yep. Yeah, and so how are we? How how do we win as a team if all I'm trying to do is step over you to yep. get to my next mm-hmm. spot? That makes it really difficult. Yep, absolutely. Um, and so I think that, you know, it's important to know where to draw the line and that line is not difficult to define, right? Mm-hmm. The, the line is defined. <laughs> the line is defined. I don't know about uh, you, but my <laughs> line's pretty low. <laughs> so, uh, when competitiveness raises the bar and makes other people better, that's healthy. <laughs> when it lowers morale and it hurts the team. Unhealthy. That's mm-hmm. unhealthy. hmm and also, I would say, uh, when, let's say, a, a team member who is who has a mindset of being a competitive team player, their job is also to motivate others to mm. like, make sure that they are also feeling the competition of like being better, being exactly. striving every single day to be better, and then I have a, and then also on top of that, I think the leader's job is to keep every one of them. Uh, remind uh, like reminded of what is the organization goal mm-hmm. otherwise people get like unfocused and lost in individual goals rather than mm-hmm. organization goal mm-hmm. absolutely yep 100 percent next if we want to uh gain influence with the people around us. I think it's important to be authentic Mm. or not Mm. pretend we're perfect. So in the 360 degree leader, I just want to read this, um, the very first paragraph from this chapter, because I thought it was funny. So it says, a man who has been suffering from constant headaches finally went to see his doctor. I don't know why I keep getting these terrible headaches, he lamented. I don't drink like so many other people do. I don't smoke like so many other people do. I don't run around at night like so many other people do. I don't overeat like so many other people do. I don't... 
At this point, the doctor interrupted him. Tell me, the physician asked. This pain you complain of, is it a sharp shooting pain? Yes, the man asked. And does it hurt here, here, and here? The doctor asked, indicating three places around his head. Yes, the man replied hopefully. That's it exactly. Simple, the doctor said, rendering his diagnosis. Your problem is that you have your halo on too tight. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you. Uh, (laughs) Uh, Yeah. Nobody is perfect, right? Even, Even that guy. Even that guy. Even that guy. But sometimes we go in with that mindset, right? We're, we're our ego is up here, mm-hmm. and we uh, we don't consider that we might have faults or we might not be perfect. And let's say being like being un- imperfect makes you relatable. Yeah, absolutely. I'm the first one to admit I have faults. I will be, have no problem making a fool of myself. <laughs> and I'll completely admit it. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I also don't know how to be another way. Because <laughs> yeah. it doesn't, it, it's, it's, it's so much energy to just not be yourself either. So yeah. I mean, it's not any of us, but all of us have <laughs> worked with that person that just does no wrong. Yeah. yeah. No, it is, but it is, you're right. It's absolutely hard to see your, that you might you might have faults too and that you could you could improve in areas, but I think it's when you pretend like you don't is where the problem lies. Yep. So let's I think, see. Uh, Go ahead. Just connecting to what Emma said, it's like a realization that everyone must know and do not lie to themselves. Yes. That lying to yourself, it's like looking in the mirror and saying that, hey, I'm the most perfect person in the world. (laughs) No, that's not how it is. And knowing that um, making mistakes and learning from them is a bigger opportunity and bigger factor to look at rather than being perfect Mm -hmm. at a specific job because once you're perfect at something you're done there and then there's no place to progress and nobody wants to stuck at one place and then just be at that place and don't do anything Mm mm-hmm absolutely I think you have two different people you have the person that doesn't realize they have faults right Mm -hmm. they're being uh, they're being inauthentic with themselves and then I think you have people that know they have faults, but they try to hide them. Mm. And the reality is, is that like your faults and your weaknesses usually aren't a secret. No. Other not. people know them. They, they see, right see them. You. Yeah. And so if you, so regardless of what you're trying to hide, people are seeing where your weaknesses are and mm-hmm. where your faults might lie. Um, and so admitting that you have weaknesses, admitting that you have fault instead of trying to hide it is really where we see authenticity where we're authentic so um some leaders fear that if they reveal their failures they'll lose credibility if they try to hide their failures they'll come off as phony Mm -hmm. if they try to hide their successes they won't have much credibility but if they highlight only their successes they come off as arrogant and unrelatable and so here i wrote these are both extremes most of the time mm-hmm. we live between these two lines and mm-hmm. authenticity is about living an open life between the lines of success and failure yeah. because to your point patam wholeness wholeness doesn't mean perfection mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. perfection nobody wants perfect mm-hmm. it doesn't exist what are some other ways that we can make sure that we're not pretending we're perfect. I think that, and um, also not worrying so much about what everybody thinks about you. I think some of that, like, you think about, like, high school, and you're always worried what everybody's going to think about you, and you're so concerned about it, and then, I don't know, at some point you're like, I just don't care anymore. I'm going to be who I am. It is. Mm -hmm. It is. It's very restrictive to be concerned about everybody else, because then you're not concerned about yourself right and what you want and what you think yeah um i'm gonna go ahead and i'm just gonna do this little piece here about a mosaic because i think that it's beautiful um so a mosaic is at once intricate yet majestic and it's precisely its brokenness that lends the mosaic its perception of fragile beauty and isn't this true too of our humanity 
What is it about brokenness that we find so offensive? Mm-hmm. What would happen when we accept and embrace that being broken is an essential part of humanity's being? What would happen when we cease to label brokenness as, as bad? What would it take for us to cease labeling brokenness as bad? I can imagine one certainty, more peace. Accepting and embracing brokenness is not the same as using another's brokenness to feel better about ourselves. Rather, it's an acknowledgement of our common humanity. When I accept my own brokenness and I don't judge myself harshly because of it, I find myself capable of more compassion towards others, regardless of whether I'm aware of the form of brokenness they've experienced. And that comes from Rosalina Chai. She's an author and a blogger. I just thought it was beautiful. It is beautiful. And I just think that so often we think that if we're not perfect, we can't, you know, like we're we're out of place. Mm -hmm. But the reality is, is like these broken pieces or these faults or these mistakes, they Mm -hmm. make us into the beautiful people that we are. Mm -hmm. And when are we going to realize that I'm not better than you Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I'm not better than you? But all of these things that I've experienced and all these mistakes that I've made have helped build me into this beautiful Beautiful person that I am. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. I I like that a lot. Okay, so let's just talk about avoiding office politics and gossips. So... We're in the political season now. (laughs) Oh, I don't pay attention to that at all. (laughs) That's how much I avoid it. (laughs) It's it's so depressing. It is. Um, But when we get into politics at work, that means kind of... um, Right, like I'm just working people. Yes, I'm working people mm-hmm. to just be like, how can I? What so can I get out? You of can you? get ahead. Like, yeah, I get ahead. Right. Um, it, it could look like taking credit for somebody else's work or shifting responsibilities for failures. Oh gosh, I that one's the worst. Of like, oh, I'll, I, I'll take this, but then if it's a failure, then you're gonna take responsibility for that, right? Well, you know, I. <laughs> I did this part right here, but Patom dropped the ball, so <laughs> that's why this project didn't work out. <laughs> yeah, it, you know, it also looks like um, forming alliances with others to protect mutual interests. Like we know. have an alliance <laughs> <laughs> to protect the interests of women of Hudson. Yeah. <laughs> It is to protect a mutual interest. Yeah. Also, like, the manipulation and the team of, like, controlling others yes. by, like, some sort of, like, emotional or any other way and trying to have, like, the control over the team in a negative way, mm-hmm. which mm-hmm. is also a part of being, like, a very bad politics. I mean, there shouldn't be a politics at all. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, so you can get ahead in one of two ways, right? Okay. You can work hard, mm, mm-hmm. or you can work an angle. Mm-hmm. But you're going to earn so much more respect from your coworkers if you get ahead by working hard, rather than like going behind people's back and like playing this angle and mm-hmm. playing that angle and sucking up to this person, and the whole time not working hard. Right? You're not getting anywhere with that. What are you doing? (laughs) Uh, And so, you know, I think something that we need to, two of the things that we need to focus on are avoiding gossip Mm -hmm. and staying away from petty arguments. Absolutely. And I've said this before and I'll say this again. If arguments and drama seem to follow you, you should take a good look in the mirror because somebody is not going to come up to me and gossip to me unless they know that I'm open to hearing it. Right. It's a, it's a sign of maturity in your leadership. If you say, I'm, I'm not, I don't want to hear this right now, right? Because mm-hmm. you're not trying to, um, to listen. You don't want to be a part of it. You need to be standing up for what's right, not necessarily what's popular. Yeah. So, and I think that's one of the hard things. If you see somebody being treated wrong, are you going to be the one to step in and say, this isn't the right way to handle mm-hmm. this. This isn't the right thing to do. Um, I think that's really important. Yeah. yeah. I think, yeah, that everybody in a team is a leader in some sort of way. Mm-hmm. So it's it's everybody's job to handle one another um, respect. If I don't have 
anybody to go gossip to, mm-hmm. then I can't gossip, gossiping. right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we, uh, you know, if you listen to gossip, you're allowing gossip. And so, listen, I think there's definitely some consequences or potential consequences for kind of engaging in office politics mm-hmm. and gossip and drama. Um, and that is you lose a lot of credibility. You do. You lose a lot of influence. Absolutely. So finally, I think that um, a key to building influence is being able to expand your circle of acquaintances. So it's really easy to stay inside mm-hmm. of environments and stay friends with people who mm-hmm. you're comfortable with and who are you're secure with, right? But you can't v- grow and avoid change at the same time. So if you want to expand your circle of influence, you have to expand your circle of acquaintances. Mm-hmm. I think we talked about this. Oh, I don't know which I video we talked either. about it in at this point of in time, but you know, if, if I'm only surrounding myself with like-minded people that think the same things and know the same things, I've only, I'm only keeping accounting people around me because I like accounting and that's what I'm comfortable with. Right. And, you know, I'm mi- really missing out on learning a lot of other things. You don't learn anything else if you're mm-hmm. just surrounded by like-minded people and similar people. That's absolutely true. Yeah. Um, so how do we expand our circle? Well, you can start by, you know, trying to find friends of friends. I think that's like a really easy way to expand your acquaintances, right? Hey, I know you have friends, so let me introduce me to some of your friends. And right there, there's a way you can start building connections with other people. So you choose five friends. Right there, you could have an extra, I'm terrible at math, like 25 people mm-hmm. if each of them introduced you to five, right? That's a great idea, Emma. Thanks. Is the, it the best? The best. <laughs> <laughs> So, but Tom, how do you go about like building your your network, right? But because, like, imagine if you went from five friends to fifty friends. Imagine like how much more influence you have right mm-hmm. now. Um, my friend calls me up and says, "Oh man, I really need a job." Instead of me being like, "Well, I have five friends in accounting, and you do marketing, so." I don't have anything for you right (laughs) now. I have 50 friends, and some of those friends are in marketing, and then they can use their resources to maybe help Mm -hmm. me because I build influence with them. We're friends. They like me. Uh They want to help me. It's just like just this this circle of influence, this network you create by building relationships with people outside of your... Your bubble. Bubble. Yeah. Yeah. Makes a difference. And also like... Looking for opportunity to like work in a different type of projects, mm, like mm-hmm. like let's say accounting. Accounting can do multiple things. Like they can work with marketing, uh, work with I don't know uh, finance, which is part of the account. But like there are other departments in a company where they could join, and uh, not only account accounting, but also like uh, social media marketing mm-hmm. or else, like. Uh, parts department everyone can like uh, work together on a project and get to connect with other people and share ideas also yeah absolutely I think at work is a great place to expand and you never know where an idea is going to come from Mm -hmm. not the best idea Mm because that's here but (laughs) (laughs) but you really don't you know so bringing in different minds and you get such a good like collaboration and like a a meshing of things that you really can have something great come out of that Mm -hmm. Um, and I I think for like another way that I expand my circle of acquaintances I mentioned this in the last one about how I'm trying to like be more actively engaged in my neighborhood and my community Mm -hmm. and like having these like Mm -hmm. you know community events within us and starting to talk to more people so like I got a I have a guy next to me who's an IT person and somebody who lives in the the cul-de-sac who's a nurse and so just now I know you know and Mm -hmm. I've had that but you know without having put myself out there and you know we love the word intentional you have to be intentional if you want to Mm -hmm. Expand your circle. Mm-hmm. You have to. There's no other way to do it. It's not going to come to you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and I imagine I have people out there that are listening to us right now and saying, well, listen, I don't like people. So <laughs> <laughs> I have no interest in expanding 
my circle of acquaintances. Right. But, you know, the more broadly we connect with people, and that's whether we're going out drinking with, you know, that's not saying I'm going out every night and drinking right, with people. Right. I'm just connecting with more people. I'm expanding mm-hmm. my network. Um, yes. The, the greater then it uh, is the potential to influence other people. And mm-hmm. that's what we're talking about. How do I gain influence? But also, the greater than is the potential for you to be influenced yeah. by somebody else. Mm-hmm. Um, which, if we are really opening ourselves up to grow and learn, I want to hear what you have to say. I want to hear what this person over here with their background and their story or mm-hmm. their culture or their job or whatever. I want to hear more of that. So when I connect with more people, I get more and more opportunities for that. Mm-hmm. Yep, absolutely. It's very true. Yeah, like I think we had a GM summit, right? Mm-hmm. A couple weeks ago. Months. Months, mm-hmm. yeah. I was not there, but I, I probably assumed that a lot of great ideas and great connections were made over there. Mm-hmm. But, there were um, that's I think our people are our greatest asset and that's the one thing I say about Hudson all the time is we have such a great group of people, such a great culture. But you're right, but Tom, like being sitting in meetings like that, Mm -hmm. it's not really uh, hardly ever about who's standing at the front and the you know, the their notes that Mm -hmm. they're um, that they want to talk to everybody about. It's really a me sitting beside my peer and saying, mm-hmm. well, look at you, like you do this really well. How do you do it? Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. Like, I'm really struggling here. How do you do mm-hmm. this? And using those people, it's, it's huge. It is. It's really huge. And it's great. It's great to see. Mm-hmm. Yep. Another session down. <laughs> Next uh, month, we'll talk about bleeding down. Bleeding down. All right. Yep, that's it. Thank you, guys. My best idea. <laughs> Definitely the winner, though. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see.